Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and once again, it's cast time, and, um, let me intro this real quick. This is gonna be, uh, Zake and City of Dawn, and Orchestral Suite for tape. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, it's, for the most part, it's, um, uh, it's, it's what it says, it's kind of, it's classical synth. That's that's the only thing. That's the only name I could think of about this. Uh, but it wasn't my first choice. Um, I was at there was actually a, an album or two that I was wanting to play instead. But uh, there I'm still waiting on the copyright checks for those. So not wanting to wait, wait around for those. I just went ahead and dug this one up. So but let me go ahead and uh, start it on over. Okay. And uh, chances are this music might be a little loud at times, but uh, it's a fairly quiet album otherwise, so I had to kind of balance it out. But otherwise, um, a very rough work week. Um, per rough enough to where uh, Thursday and Friday, I didn't stream at all. I just didn't have the energy. Just being too, uh, too beat up and tore up from work. And... Uh, but uh, I did do a session today, but uh, it was kind of against my better judgment. I just figured, you know, since I'm up, um, since, you know, since I'm up and since I'm off tonight, might as well at least make an attempt. Um, but yesterday, Thursday and Friday, though, I did try playing some FX3, but it it crashed within like less than five minutes, so no go on that. Uh, this time around, though, however, I got lucky. No crashes at all, so I, I really, I really wish I, I really wish there was a way I could find out what I did to make this possible, so I could uh, make it continue. Because right now it's like pretty much a random chance. So, but otherwise for the session today, it basically it was just average. Um, just I think an FX3, I think a, I think I won a tournament. Uh, I want excuse me. I want a tournament, and then uh, all the rest of them that I entered, uh, I did. I did okay. Like a wasn't exactly tearing up the terrain or anything, but then again, I wasn't doing god awful bad either. Um. So, and plus, uh, since the tournament pickings was fairly slim, like um, a lot of table, a lot of the tables either I don't care to do them or. They had really bad stipulations, or the scores on them were so obscenely high that they were well with well beyond my reach. Um, I actually just uh, I just did a bunch of randos instead, just played a bunch of random tables. On a uh, pinball arcade, uh, kind of the same thing, just uh, just did okay, eh. But I think part of this too was just you know I just. I got home, you know, it was a work night, so just like the past two days, I didn't really, didn't really have the gumption to really want to stream. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea. But yeah, otherwise, pretty much felt like shit most of the week. But like, but like I said, in case I didn't, in case I didn't say earlier, um, I I got lucky today. There, no crashes, no crash-free, no crash-free gaming or anything like that. So I definitely have that going for me. Just and I'm hope, definitely hoping for the same tomorrow. But like I said, I I I wish I knew what to do to keep these games from crashing. I mean, aside from. I mean, you know, like a look, like something little, you know, like changing a setting here or something, and not have to go out and buy a whole computer, which I think ultimately I'm gonna end up having to do anyway. So. Um, and then after that, just um. Uh, 
again, I didn't really have any after the after the stream. Didn't really have the energy to do anything else, so um, played a little bit of Gems of War, but I only care to play it for about 15 or so minutes. Um, and oh, and uh, I think it was yesterday and or the day before, like during the work week, I rented a movie called American History X. Um, I think uh, there was an episode of Analyzing Evil uh, from a channel called The Vile Eye, and they uh, they talked about. They talked about the main character. Kind of had me interested. So, ran in the movie. And I'm like, damn. I mean, it, it's about it's about a white supremacist. Or white supremacist, I mean. Um, just, you know, neo-Nazi and all that. Um, but, and, be, and before anybody asks, is Joel a racist? Um, short answer, no. My favorite genre of music is jazz so no and actually it just hit me it just hit me um let me let me pull this up real quick yeah i gotta pull this sucker up But yeah, um, I just, this is, um, actually one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite albums. Um, uh, Tenaro one, they're a band, uh, I want to say Bali, or Mali, I don't know the, I don't know the exact name, but it's out in Africa. They're, you know, they're, ba they're basically a bunch of Arabians, but yeah, I mean, that, like I said, it's one of my favorite albums, so no, I'm not a racist. But, but anyway, it's still a pretty, still a pretty good movie, though. I, I got maybe about halfway through it. I made the mistake of doing this like in the middle of a work week when, you know, you know, when I just, I don't really have the, uh, the I don't, I don't have the gumption to really pay attention to, you know, actually watch the movie. Either A, I'm busy getting ready for work or two, I feel so much like shit. I just don't really want to do anything. So what I'll probably do since the uh, rental period has ran out on it, I'll probably re-rent it and actually watch it this time. You know, now that I'm, you know, now that it's my weekend, I'm off and stuff, I could actually, you know, sit on and actually watch the damn thing. So, but like I said, from what little, uh, from what little I remember of it, it's actually a pretty good movie. So, but, but, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, and, uh, and also, um, I also need to kind of give up. I, I do have to give somewhat of a shout out to Idle Champs. I mean, through all the, through all the time, through all my crashes and stuff like that, and a lot of my other games that I can't get to work these days, it's got to be the one game that I could think of, one that I actually want to play. I mean, Gems of War, Gems of War works, but I only care to play it in small doses, like 15 minutes or so. So, but Idle Champs. Yeah, it's. I mean, this game has really carried me, carried me. This game has really carried me a long time. I mean, uh, okay. Oh, and um, uh, I'm in a new area, by the way. I'll just. But but yeah, like I said, it's an, it's an idle game, so you know you just. Start it up, let it run, then you go off and do other stuff.
But uh, I've said this, I think I've said this in other casts as well. Um, it's it's got to have one of the best communities too I've ever seen in a game because these guys, I know, I don't think all of them are, but I know at least some of the people, um, the, the game devs and stuff, the guys that actually put in the work to make this, they play it and they actually stream it. So it's a pretty strong community. Um, I think yes, I think yesterday or the day before, um, some of the people on there that were like, I guess they did the artwork, maybe some of the programming or something. I don't know, but I know they had a they had a hand in actually making the game. They were streaming themselves painting miniatures, you know. And I think there's uh, there was a bunch of other people actually, you know, uh, some podcasters and whatnot, you know. So it's got a it's got a pretty strong community. And keep in mind too that this is an idle game. You know, you know, games like this, you know, they're for the most most part, they're one and done type games. You know, they just get them up and running, and then after that, they don't give two shits about them. Maybe like you know, maybe put in a new patch here every so often or something. I'm gonna I'm gonna take another drink here. But yeah, and um. And I want to say too that uh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta think a moment on this. And I think the guys that uh, and a lot of the game devs, I think they're also into Dungeons and Dragons as well. So, and again, they they play this game. I think they've streamed themselves playing Dungeons and Dragons as well. In theory, and in case anyone asks what I think of Dungeons and Dragons, um, in theory, I freaking love it. It's one of those things I grew up on. Um, it's one of the reasons why I'm why RPGs are my favorite genre. But that's about as far as it goes. Actually playing it like in the old-fashioned tabletop, I, I can't do it. It just like I said, I've tried watching, I've tried watching streams of this. It just, I, it goes over my head, over my head and under my feet. Now. As far as I like play in RPG games, well, I just said it. I mean, it's my favorite video game genre. So, but, so, to answer that question, now that that's, that question's answered, again, going back to what I was originally talking about, it's got a very strong community for just a mere idle game. Because, like I said, most of these idle games, they're one-shot affairs. They just make the games and then just, nobody, that's it. They go off and do other stuff. I mean, part of it's understandable. It's only, it's quote unquote only an idle game. I mean, you know, and part of it, and part of it too. And by comparison, you know, you know, other games like uh, fighting games come to mind. Same thing. Um, I think MMOs could probably fall in that category too. I don't think a lot of the people, a lot of the game devs that make these games, don't actually play them. You know, they just put it out there. And they, you know, they probably check out player feedback and all that. But then they take it and they use it and they, you know, they'll make adjustments and balance changes and whatnot. And then they put out a new patch. You know, or they put out a version update. And after that, they're back in their cave and never to be seen and heard from again. And these are like, you know, popular ass, you know, fighting games and all that other stuff. Super popular stuff. It ain't like idle games. So... That's one of the reasons why I say, you know, Idle Champs of the Forgotten Realms has got to have one of the best communities out there. They do more for just a mere idle game than a lot of these other, you know, devs do for like MMOs and fighting games. So, but like it, like I said, I mean, this is a game that's carried me for a very long time. Because unlike most other games, it doesn't crash. Oh, and I, I kind of an aside. Um, Zachariah Pinball, it don't crash either, except maybe one time, but those that have seen my streams or my cast videos know I have no love for that, for Zachariah. So, I only want to play it as a last resort. And I guess in case anyone else wanted to ask, well, why don't you stream Idle Champs? Nobody watches it. Which, kind of understandable, I mean, it's an idle game. You know, not a whole lot of actual action going on. I have, uh, I played, uh, podcasts, interviews, 
you know, I've actually, uh, I've actually ran some extracurricular stuff outside of the idol game. I mean, nobody, you know, nobody shows up. But once again, it's understandable. It's an idol game. So, but I guess the... But I guess to kind of, I guess to kind of do like a somewhat of a gameplay demo for those that have never seen it. Um, this is actually um, unlike most other most other idle games. This is a formation-based game where you place your characters. Where you place your characters actually matters. So, and then, you know, and the goal is to, you know, whatever you're, kill, mo kill a certain amount of monsters, collect a certain amount of items, um, defeat bosses and stuff like that, like, man, cultist of Syrup defeated, so, boss battle. But yeah, and the um, oh, there goes the boss. But uh, even the uh, even the people who made the music for this. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn the music on. One, it's probably copyrighted. Um, two. I like it. It's good music for a uh, for an idol game, but at least in my personal opinion, there's there's a uh, better music for me out there. So. There's a lot of it's uh, a lot of it's rockish. Um, okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember the name. I'm trying to remember the name of the music the, of the band. It's a uh, angry video game nerd. He started up the band Rex Viper. I hope I don't turn there. Okay. You know you have um songs called Gelatinous. You know Gelatinous Cube. It's a type of monster. You know, Mel's Mighty March. He never, you know. So, a bit on the cheesy side. But like I said, Rex Viper kind of comes to mind when I when I when I check out the playlist and some of this music. And then um, and also like I like I said earlier too, even the even the guy who makes the game music, he streams this game as well. So, like I said, it the people who make this game have a very active part in the game. So. There was something something else about American History X I wanted to talk about, too. I, I don't really want to go too much in depth on this movie because I don't want... You know, things like racism and politics and stuff like that are hot topics. So, and I... I don't want to turn this into a political war, for lack of a better word. But, uh... I can kind of... One thing I do have to say about, um... About the about the, um, the neo-Nazis and the racists and all, all that other stuff. From what little I've... From what, um... From what little I've seen in the movie... Or from what they talk about, I probably actually agree with some of it. That's that's kind of the creepy part about it, because these um uh, these uh the neo Nazis in here they're not just Negroes are a cancer upon this planet. They must be eradicated. You know, it isn't just some it isn't just some blind kill the niggers or anything like that. Like there's you know they talk about a affirmative action. You know they talk about they talk about how uh. Billy Bob's grocery store back in the day. You know, he used to work there. This person here used to work there. And, you know, it was a great, you know, this neighborhood used to be a great community until, the, you know, the blacks, Hispanics, and all that, they came in and ran us out of our jobs, etc., etc. So, which, believe it or not, some of it I actually agree with. Um, in fact, we I kind of have first-hand experience on it right now because uh, Walmart's hiring up. Uh, they hired a whole bunch of Arabian people. Uh, those that have uh, listened to my other casts, I'm pretty much going to be repeating myself here, but but yeah, um, they hired a bunch of Arabians who don't even speak English. 
I, I can't really talk to him. I, and, and, you know, every time I, every time I try to explain something to him, they just give me a blank stare. I don't know how else to, you know, basically it's a language barrier. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of a, to me, it's kind of a dick move on the part of management. Yeah, I get, I get it. We're shorthanded. You know, you know, we're short staffed, but, you know, it, surely there's got to be a bunch of people out there who, who actually do speak English, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, I got to be able to communicate with them. So, you know, and so again, there's, there's a bit of relatability in here. So again, I think what I'm trying to say about the movie is, is it's actually got some good writing. Because like I said, this isn't, they didn't paint these guys as just a bunch of crazy nut jobs who just, you know, who just want to go out and outright eradicate anybody who's not white. Like there's, you know, they actually have reasoning and stuff like that. And, so, whereas, you know, I'm used to, you know, whereas I'm used to these, you know, used to racists and neo-Nazis, they just, you know, they want to lynch blacks and all that because they just don't like them. You know, just pure racism. So, but enough on that. Um, one other thing that, uh, that happened um, I think it was sometime last week when, uh, I think one of my cast videos I was complaining about, um, oh, it was, a, uh, it was a video I did about YouTube sponsorship. I remember me talking about it. Um, shortly after I made that video, I don't remember, I think it was some Google search. I don't remember what I typed out, but what did come up was, a uh, was an add-on for your browser called Sponsor Block. I downloaded that and use use that immediately. Now, here's there's an interesting twist to this. So this isn't just some kind of, you know, I mean I'm not I'm not anti-sponsor. I mean, you know I get it. You you need to pay your bills and stuff like that, and you don't want to you don't want to have to go out and get a quote unquote real job, you know that kind of thing. You know you want to make a living doing what you enjoy doing. I get that, but. You know, don't pay. You know, don't pay your fucking sponsor plug right in the middle of a video. I mean, it's kind of a dick move. So, you know, put it at the beginning or at the end. But um, but I, I don't want. I don't. I don't want to elaborate on that or anything, right? Like, I mean, I kind of. I kind of need to move along. But so anyway, I. Download a sponsor block. Um, it's pretty damn useful, but on the I don't want to say it's a downside, but I think the the database, for lack of a better word, is entirely user generated. So this isn't this isn't automatic. It's not like a like a YouTube algorithm or anything like that. Like um, so I this is probably one of the things I actually like about about this. Because there's been a video or two where the, uh, the video would, you know, would start to plug their sponsor. But sponsor block, it's not in the database. So you can actually, you can actually go through and, you know, I, I wish I could do it here on YouTube. I wish I had a video, but uh, I'm going to try to explain this as best I can. But you can manually mark or flag the sponsor plug or whatever whatever it is like an ad or whatnot etc you can uh, manually mark that part of the video as a as a paid promotion sell promotion etc you know the whole like and subscribe you know you can uh i think you could actually flag that part of the video and you can add it to sponsor blocks database and uh so that's one thing I actually like about it. Um, secondly, when uh, when you pick a video or when you want to watch a video that uh, that does have a that does have a sponsor plug in there, it'll show you on the uh, the video timeline. Like, and it'll be a big old red part. It'll be uh, marked in red or yellow, 
where that is, I've actually started actually going to that part, that right area, to see what it is, to see what they're plugging. Oh, and, I, and, I, and also, let me rewind a little bit. When uh, when you're watching a video and it gets to that that highlighted part of the video, it'll instantly skip that part of the video and go right into the rest of it. Sometimes it's a little bit disorienting, but damn, that's awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take another drink here. So, but yeah, but like I said, um, I'm actually starting to find myself whenever I see a, whenever I watch a video that's gonna have a paid sponsorship in there or something like that, I actually go to it to see what it is. So this actually has the, it almost has a reverse effect. I mean, of what I, of what I intended. I thought I was just gonna sit back and watch, just let the, let the video run its course, skip over the whole thing. No, I actually go right to it. And, hmm, I wonder what these guys are plugging. You know, you know, kind of seeing where the location is and stuff like that. So, but yeah, um, very good addition to your browser. And I got to look at something real quick. Okay. I just didn't have any music there for a while. Thought YouTube might have froze up. Um, but otherwise, that's going to do it from everybody. I'm just going to go ahead and call it good. Um, uh, I, I believe I said all the things that I wanted to and hope this came out okay. And this is something that's been on my mind all throughout this, especially the latter half of this cast. I hope this came out okay. Um, some of the things that I want, some of the things that I was wanting to say was coming out wrong. So I had to do a lot of improvising here. I might actually, I, I might actually title this. <laughs> yeah, I might actually make this the title of my video. I hope this came out okay, because that again, that's exactly what's been go what was going through my mind this whole time. So, but otherwise, once again, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it good. So, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that, and um, I should be able to do it on the one at least tomorrow. So. But until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody, and I'll see you all next time. Bye now.